Imagine waking up one morning feeling like the world is spinning around you. It's a terrifying experience that can disrupt your daily life, including your career. A personal story. I used to love my job, but vertigo made it so difficult to concentrate. I felt like I was constantly on the verge of falling behind. Understanding vertigo. Vertigo is a sensation of spinning or dizziness. It can be caused by inner ear problems, medications, or other underlying health conditions. Impact on career. Vertigo can have a significant impact on your career. It can lead to reduced productivity, missed deadlines, and even job loss. But don't despair. There are strategies you can use to manage vertigo and continue to thrive in your career. Coping Strategies Adapting Your Workplace Talk to your employer about accommodations that can help you be successful. They may be more understanding than you think. Job Modifications Exploring Job Modifications like reducing physical demands or adjusting your duties. Support systems. Building a strong support network of friends, family, and healthcare professionals. Building a support network. Surround yourself with people who understand what you're going through. Joining a support group can provide valuable emotional support and practical advice. Overcoming challenges. There are practical steps you can take to manage vertigo at work. These include Accommodations Requesting accommodations from your employer, such as flexible work hours or a quiet workspace. Reducing physical demands or adjusting your duties. Surround yourself with people who understand what you're going through. With the right strategies and support, it's possible to overcome vertigo and achieve your career goals. According to article published by Heike Benek and colleagues in Frontiers in Neurology October 2013, the burden and impact of vertigo findings from the Revert Patient Registry. In this study a total of 4,294 patients at 618 centers, in 13 countries were included during the registry. Of the 4,105 patients analyzed, only half were in employment. Among this working patient population 69.8% had reduced their workload, 63.3% had lost working days, and 46 had changed and 5.7% had quit their jobs due to vertigo symptoms. All I know is I saw sideways and it was spinning and it was really scary. It lasted about a week and a half before I went to the doctor and he referred me to you guys, which I was really happy okay. to go to a physical therapist. Go? I didn't, I didn't know the miraculous things that physical therapy could do. I've been here since for other things. Um, but I was just amazed the training that Jamie had had. Jamie's the one that helped me. And um, she gave me she gave me the history of what vertigo is and what causes it. It was like I was on a Ferris wheel and but it was at an angle and it was moving very, very rapidly to where I couldn't walk at all. It was, um, well, it was close to a miracle for me because I had no idea how important physical therapy was, to be honest with you. And um, she, re I was calm, relaxed. I mean, she made me calm and relaxed. She was very personable. And uh, she knew I was a little bit nervous. And um, she just gave me specific instructions. I didn't have to take any clothes off. And, uh, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> with my head, and she told me ahead of time, you know, what we were going to do, some movements. And... Um, I eventually got to a point where I was in a different movement and, and Jamie got excited because my eye was going up and down so that meant I really did have the PPV yeah. whatever and um, and so then she said well let's take a break and then she had me try it again and I had to stare at one spot for 30 seconds and it's common to get nauseous so I did get nauseous uh, but I stuck it out and then I went to the bathroom real quick but I was fine so <laughs> but, but um, we did that twice 
I didn't have to come back after that, but I did because she gave me things I could do to prevent it and made me more aware of my body and balancing and how it worked. I think I went home and kind of took it easy on the couch, which I like to do anyway. I came in the afternoon, but then it didn't come back. Yeah. And Jamie um, gave me the encouragement to do certain exercises so I didn't have to do it again. So the treatment she gave me, I could do myself at home. Great. So I haven't had it since. That's awesome. Because <laughs> for me, it affected my life a lot. I had to quit work because I worked at Debenhams and being on my feet all the time, I just couldn't. Like I felt like I was going to pass out quite a few times and I was just so unsteady on my feet. It was dreadful. I also went through uni with this so as you can imagine I missed quite a few lectures. Not loads though considering how ill I felt but I just, I genuinely struggled to walk. Some days I couldn't get out of bed, it was that bad. It would flare up really really badly to where I was holding onto the sides, struggling to get to the toilet and when you have no diagnosis and you're a hypochondriac and that's happening, Obviously you are like, what the hell is going on? This is actually terrifying. There's something wrong with my head. And it's really horrible as well because this is why I think it's an invisible disability because although my friends were supportive and they tried to understand, I don't think they ever fully could. And because I never actually looked ill and I was still trying to be my bubbly self because I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. I think a lot of the times if I said I couldn't go to plans or lectures or whatever, they'd kind of be like, oh, she's canceling again. But it's like, I wish I could show you how it feels in my head because I bet you a million percent you would not go to the plans either. And then it starts to mix with the anxiety and you start to feel too scared to go to plans because you're like, what if it flares up? What am I meant to do? What if I pass out in front of my friends? I'm someone who doesn't like to rely on people and, and I don't like to be vulnerable around people. So I would never ever tell them, oh, can I link your arm? When really I just should have because I needed that extra support and I just struggle in silence instead and end up not going to things. Even though I know if I would have told them I needed help and support walking, they a million percent would have given me that um but also like nights out became a lot harder alcohol was really weird because obviously alcohol makes you feel dizzy but in some ways for me like sometimes i'd drink it when i was dizzy and it would just be too much and i'd be like no i feel even worse and other times it would kind of mask that dizziness and just make me feel drunk in general if that makes sense so sometimes it made it more bearable being drunk and in a kind of nightclub environment but at the same time sometimes it would make it worse dizziness and dizziness together i don't know <laughs> vestibular therapy or vestibular rehabilitation is basically exercises that help you retrain your brain your signals and learn to balance again it literally is like people that go through physiotherapy and stuff like they've been in an accident they're learning to walk again but this is like in your mind a condition in the mind um you have to learn how to walk properly again how to balance how to feel stable and these exercises are actually really easy to do one where i'd have a little cross on the wall stand a few meters away from the cross and then I would try and keep my vision on the cross while moving my head like this and then I'd also have somewhere I just the ones that I'm doing now I'm um, still where I look left to right and you kind of just stand still and focus on moving your head one of the things for people that have PPPD is they have very stiff necks because we don't want to move our head much because it makes everything go really disorientated so stiff neck you kind of need to make sure you keep moving it and these exercises make sure that you do so it's really good another thing which I found so so tricky but so helpful was putting myself in these environments that prompted the anxiety and the dizziness so going to a supermarket going to like busy shops going to train stations stuff like that and having to kind of force myself to not panic. Do this first with someone around you, someone that you trust, so your friend, your partner, your parents, whoever, and just have them there, but don't hold on to them unless you need to hold on to them. And just kind of embrace the feelings and remind yourself you're not gonna pass out. Have you passed out at all? No, so just because you feel faint, you won't faint. So the more you focus on feeling faint, the worse it gets. So really you just need to distract yourself, try and focus on something else, which can be very hard. It's a lot easier said than done when you've got this massive foggy, dizzy head, blurred vision, everything going on. Um, so it is very difficult, but the more you do it and the more you get comfortable, you feel you can avoid these places less and you'll find yourself getting better along with the exercise exercises you can have medications so like depression and anxiety tablets ssris but i would suggest this is the last resort because i feel like there are side effects and complications with using antidepressants and i feel like these exercises have worked so well that it's better to try that first and then maybe go with that afterwards if it's not working for you i know that anxiety meds would work well for me because i do have anxiety but i just use cbd instead actively too but definitely the vestibular exercises have been so so helpful for me and my dizziness is now at like 
At one point it felt like it fully went. Now I'd say it's at about 10% just because of lockdown and not going out as much when I do. I'm not used to the environment so much. So I have picked up my exercise again because I stopped them for about six months once I realized I felt fine. But you may feel that some periods of your life you need to bring the exercises back. But the best thing is it's not at 100% anymore. It's at 10. So I feel like it's not interfering with my life anymore. It's just something that some days it's not the best. It can flare up a little bit. And most of the time it's absolutely fine and I feel normal and I'm not focusing on anything up here which is massive progress. So, so if you feel how I did a few years ago and you think you have this, there is most definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. You can get your life back, your social life, feel positive, feel confident going out by yourself. You will get there. Conclusion. Vertigo may be a part of my life, but it doesn't define me. Remember, you're not alone. With the right strategies and mindset, you can vertigo-proof your career and achieve your dreams.